What is a, a tool that you have used from your work either in positive psychology or studying the experience of awe and wonder? Mm -hmm. what, is a, what is a practice that you would recommend therapists learn and could you teach it to us mm -hmm. maybe right now? Yeah, um, I mean, I think there's a couple of things come to mind sort of from each each camp. Um, and, I'll, and I'll start off with, I think, you know, one thing that's really important at a time like this, because we are being pestered and bombarded with negativity constantly, whether it's through media, social media, and many of it's, you know, real information, but there's also kind of a, uh, an extreme component to it right now. You know, one thing I've been working with a lot of clients on is, how do we identify kind of small good moments throughout the day and amplify them and draw them out and sort of, you know, and you could think of this almost as savoring because I think some positive psychologists will talk about it as savoring. Rick Hansen, the great neuropsychologist, will talk about it as more taking in the good. They're very similar concepts. Mm -hmm. But if, you th if we think about this from kind of even a brain-based level, um, you know, we get, because of this negativity bias that we're all stuck with, it is so easy to just like a magnet get stuck on all the negative news. So whether it's a small moment of connection that we have with someone we love, whether it's a meal that we've prepared for our family that we are you know, going to enjoy, whether it's just a beautiful you know, outside sunset that we're, that we're looking out on uh, from wherever we live, there's no shortage of these good moments. The problem is they roll right off of us like water on a duck. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I've been working with a lot of clients around a time like this is how do we foster, how do we save or using our senses? So in the moment, how do I soak it up? But how do I also engage in anticipatory joy and past oriented joy? Mm -hmm. So how do I look forward to things? You know, so much of this, what, what's happening in this pandemic is we're kind of stuck in this place of negativity without kind of, and for lack of a better term, almost like a foreshortened future feeling. Mm -hmm. So how do I look forward to things, whether it's tomorrow, next week, or the things I'm excited about six months from now when things start to change. How do I also, after the fact, go back and relive and replay these joyful moments, these positive experiences? Because when I'm just thinking about something, you know, we're having many similar reactions in our brain and in our bodies as when we're actually having those experiences. So we can actually use our mind almost as a superpower during a time like this to amplify, to draw out, to maximize the good stuff that is there. So it's not almost like an accordion, I think of it as we're not just having this experience now, but we're stretching it out past, future, present in order to really kind of soak up the good. So one strategy that I've been working on is around whether you want to think of it as taking, you know, taking in those good moments and getting the most out of it, savoring life's joys, that's, that's for sure. But I've also obviously because of writing awestruck and it's been on my mind a lot more recently just in what we're going through thinking about with clients how do we cultivate this sense of wonder how do we cultivate this sense of awe uh, even if many of our typical avenues for it might be um, might be sort of shut off right now because of you know various social distancing measures being stuck inside and with a lot of clients that I've been working with you know, first off, what instills awe in one person might evoke a yawn in somebody else. So I think we want to recognize that we're all different people with that. And for that reason, I take much more of a curious and collaborative approach when I'm discussing about uh, things like awe with, with my clients, where I'll explore, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll convey, I'll talk about these benefits, but then we'll think almost like a, as a menu, and we'll talk about everything from awe through the natural world all through social connection, all through inspiring, you know, acts that we can, we read about or learn about, um, all through even kind of virtual awe, watching, you know, clips and documentaries and, you know, think of Cosmos or Planet Earth or any of these, that we can tap into this feeling through so many different angles. And it's thinking about how can I just get a little bit more of that in my everyday life, even in a time like this, because we know it makes us less stressed, more connected, more compassionate to ourselves and other. It changes our brain over time. So um, that's kind of a, an approach I, I also like to take around the time like this. <laughs>